Okay, so a little more unscripted this time, kind of picking up where I left off on a video I was going to do as the sixth video, but is now going to be the second video for reasons. Um, I'm not sure if I'm going to have to do like a bunch of these talky ones and then do kind of more of a photo gallery separately because uh, the YouTube doesn't like to load videos longer than 10 minutes. So we'll see how long I go on for <laughs> this time. The point I was making, one of the points I was making that I was, um, I guess, talking about my youth and I did kind of left off there. I'll go back a little bit. Okay. So what happened was like in sixth grade, you know, you, I got in my head that like junior high was going to be a special thing and I shouldn't wear all the same clothes as I, you know, my grubby kind of camouflage pants and mash t-shirts or whatever that I like to play in dominated my wardrobe along with like the OP shirts were popular at the time, which, you know, I, we still wore all through high school. Um, at the same time, <laughs> coincidentally enough, I outgrew most of those clothes anyway. So even if I wanted to keep wearing them in seventh grade, I basically couldn't. And so for the next two or three years ish before I had my next significant growth spurt, I basically needed all new clothes anyway and only had like two things that would still fit me from sixth grade. So my style immediately changed automatically when we went to Mervyn's. In those days, it was Mervyn's. And you got kind of three pairs of jeans at the beginning of every school year and maybe a new pair of sneakers. And in seventh grade, Previously, I had never worn almost anything except for Vans sneakers. In seventh grade, I noticed that all the other kids were wearing the Chuck Taylor Converse instead. So to fit in, you know, you ran out and bought a pair of those too, you know. High tops, of course. I didn't get into the low tops until later, which I still prefer now. Um, but at the time, it had to be high tops, and, you know. Not too many goofy colors necessarily, mostly black, sometimes blue. I never bought the red ones, but I had some other colored ones later. And uh, so the eighth grade uniform for the preppy kids was a polo shirt. Preferably if they had the money, they could show off that they had the little eyes out or the little tea gray. I usually didn't have that. I usually had just a stripey design, not the plain. Uh, there's two different weaves. There's like the t-shirt weave and then there's like the true polo weave. I almost never had or probably never had the true polo weave. I always had basically a striped t-shirt with a button collar. And I buttoned it all the way up and the girls would, you know, think it didn't look good at all. And I didn't care because I was used to wearing t-shirts. And I had always, as a kid too, had worn turtlenecks when I lived in the cold weather. But I liked it when the turtleneck was up around my whole neck. It was just kind of a weird thing. But instead of wearing a scarf, I would have the turtleneck. That took a little longer than it should have. Um, so, yeah, I liked my I liked my polo shirts buttoned up, but they were short sleeves and untucked. And uh, that was that. But Mervyn's had two fashion. I know mean, I'm going all over the place in this particular video. It's not, like I said, more unscripted. Mervyn's had two basic style categories or brand cat branding categories that when you got older, I knew them better at this age. I didn't really know. It was like, sure. You know. When I got into high school, I learned that they had the high Sierra line and the Cambridge classics line. Now the high Sierra line was a little more ruggedy flannels, kind of like this kind of stuff, which would literally last forever. I think I still have one in the garage somewhere that actually fits. And then they had the Cambridge classic line, which was more of your chambray shirts, the striped white, you know, alternating, uh, preppy generic shirt. And they had other stuff too, but those were the kind of ones I gravitated to was okay. This is for when you want to look nice. This is for when you want to be, you know, warm more. And so the, uh, that, like I said, that com comes a little bit later. 
but so in junior high, you know, it's the beginning of the, the school year in the fall. It's still pretty warm. You, you have a windbreaker and you have your polo shirts and you have your new jeans and you have your little Chuck Taylor shoes and you look like every other generic boy almost in the entire school set apart again, like I was saying in the last one from the heavy metal dudes who were kids the same age as you, but somehow they have a mustache and long hair already, or they seem like they do. And they've got a black t-shirt and the popular bands, you know, you could tell which guys were really hardcore versus which guys were kind of into it. Cause like if they had Def Leppard and who was the other, maybe Judas Priest, maybe they were like, not as hardcore but if they had ozzy iron and maiden you knew they were oh you know watch out for that guy you know you don't know what he's gonna do and so you had to you had to kind of you know navigate those guys you know and the one guy one like you know the one guy i knew he, he didn't dress that way he he was kind of one of those floaters he'd wear an op shirt one day but he'd wear like a door shirt the next day so, but he hang out with the metal dudes, but not so much the Def Leppard dudes. He was kind of more, well, in those days, you could wear a Motley Crue shirt and still be, you know, scary to these, you know, people. But these dudes over here would know that Motley Crue belongs east of Def Leppard. They're not Iron Maiden. <laughs> if you know, you know. But the Motley Crue had all the, like, designs that everybody liked so even if you didn't like the band you still wore the shirt like one time i was in pe in i think 10th grade and i was singing helter skelter for some reason to myself you know because i had the beatles stuck in my head and this dude with the hair comes up to me in the metallica shirt and he goes dude motley Crue sucks i i oh i didn't know that was a motley Crue song <laughs> sorry my bad uh anyway side note so anyway, uh, so in junior high, we had this kind of, like I said, kind of two-tier uniform. You had a preppy look, you had a metal look, and then you had kind of the floaters who wore, you know, the OP shirts and stylish choices. And then there was kind of a subculture of the, some of the break dancing look. Like I said, like I said in the previous about like the track suits and stuff like that, I never really caught on. It was the guy in the two dollar two dollar karate shoes that they got at the swap meet instead of vans, because his dad wouldn't pay for vans, you know. So then when high school came around, I upgraded briefly to like I said the more of the Cambridge classics and the high Sierra instead of just the generic polo shirts and uh, the whole. Well, at the time there was two big, there was the big influence was Al, uh, Michael J. Fox as Alex Keaton, you know, cause he always wore the tie and the sweater vest. And so I, you know, I adopted that style for maybe a year and a half at the most, I don't know, somewhere around sophomore year, I went haywire and, you know, adopted five different styles, but freshman year, I was basically the, the preppy kid in the, like I said, the chambray shirt and then in sophomore year it was a little more the the flannels and the not so much rock t-shirts because my parents wouldn't pay 20 bucks for a shirt which is like 300 dollars in today's money or something uh but you know a printed shirt i liked a lot of shirts that had goofy designs like donald duck or you know it would have a funny saying like are you normal or something something like that you know and i'd always wear like an open shirt over that so that people could kind of read the thing, but it wasn't like too distracting. And so that went on for a while. And by then you could start to get the holes in your jeans that made you look better, you know, because if you didn't have holes in your jeans, you were really just wasting everybody's time. You know, how dare you show up to school looking like that? You don't even have a single hole in the knee of your jeans. And which is funny because then when I got older, I almost never wear out the knee of my jeans. I always wear out the, the seat area. And same with shoes is, you know, you used to wear out on the vans, the toe area, and you had to toss them out. Now I can wear through the, the sole of the, the shoe, you know, more. Anyway, um, without, again, this turning into a ramble. So when high school kind of was over or about over, 
Dead Poet Society came out and, you know, this is that whole dark academia trend now has kind of become a thing. Previous to that movie, I had already wanted to adopt that preppy style. And I liked the whole boarding school aesthetic, but I, I never went to a boarding school. I couldn't tell you where there was one in, you know, a thousand miles. Um, like I said, I had, I had had the, the sweater vest and the tie and actually abandoned it because it seemed like nobody else was doing it. And everybody was just kind of making fun of me for being overdressed for high school anyway. Um, so then when that movie came out, then as an adult, I spent a fair portion of my time trying to dress again, like a high school kid <laughs> because that movie reminded me how much I liked that style. And in most of the movie, what do they do? You know, they, they wear a flannel shirt with khaki pants when they're not wearing their uniform. But the uniform is these great colors that look good together, you know, the navy and the charcoal and I think like a burgundy, which has always been one of my staple colors anyway. And uh, so, you know, the one guy had the blue sweater and the tan pants and the other guy had the green sweater and the tan pants. It's like, okay, well, that's easy enough. All I need is a second sweater. <laughs> yeah. And then the, uh, the, the duffel coat over the whole thing, which I could never find. I, I, you know, until recently, I never had the proper duffel coat. We always had something not as, you know, nice, not as comparable, not, you could, I had a pea coat that was kind of close enough. And in California, it's kind of all the coat you're usually going to ever need anyway. So I had a pea coat, but I never had the blazer. Or if I did, it never fit correctly. It was something I found at a thrift store, you know, that I was too shy to wear to college. <laughs> anyway, like nobody wears blazers here. What, what are we doing? You know, I can get away with the, the tan sweater and the, and the jeans or the green sweater and the tan pants, but there's no way a blazer is happening. And uh, so anyway, um, yeah, I guess I'm kind of running out of my point here uh, that I was going to do kind of more of a brand comparison. Like I said, I'm, I'm probably going to have to save that. So when I can upload proper photos and things to make it more digestible than just me talking. So this video, I guess, is uh, just kind of an interim. I'll, I'll probably have to do another couple like this. That hopefully won't be too, you know, tedious. Anyway, thanks for watching.